and welcome back to What the Fork at the Euros. And just like that, the final group games are upon us. England, on four points, have practically already qualified, with those four points likely to be enough to at least finish in third best place. Scotland, on the other hand, will require their first goal of the tournament, and more importantly, three points against Croatia on Tuesday to get through to the knockout stages for the very first time. And to preview the final set of fixtures in Group D, two regular What the Fork guests. Firstly, Scottish-sounding Englishman, which I feel I have to do quite often. Ian, (laughs) uh, Cold Connections man, how are you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Scott, um, obviously, I don't know if you've picked yourself up from the ceiling yet after your nil-nil draw, or should I say win, on Friday. Uh, How are you doing, mate? You all right? (laughs) Mate, honestly, I'm still disappointed that we couldn't get a win against a piss poor England side. You know, we should be on three points now, only needing a draw on Tuesday. Um, but you know, you know what I mean? Like guys like Foden, they can get their hair done like like Gaza if they want. But you know, once Stevie O'Donnell gets a hold of them, doesn't it matter, does it? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> has, has Jack um, Grealish got up yet? Is he still? On, is he? Is he landed yet? <laughs> This is all recorded, <laughs> saved for Tuesday. Um, Scott, I will come to you first, mate. I think because in the context of both games, Scotland is probably the bigger of the two because, as I said before, despite it being a disappointing result for England, I think four points should be enough to at least get us through in third place, worst case scenario. Um, you, on the other hand, let's be honest, pretty much have to win. So mm. how are the nerves sort of heading into Tuesday? Uh, t- to be honest... They're not too bad. And the reason that they're not too bad is that after we got beat by the Czech Republic last week, I had sort of convinced myself that that was it. You know, I, OK, I'll, I'll laugh and I'll joke about the England game, etc. But genuinely, I've said that on the, the preview, I, I didn't expect us to take in for the England game. I did think that England would have had too much for us. Uh, and obviously, the, the, the performance that we put in was, was really good. Uh, I was really proud of how they upped their game from... Uh, from Monday uh, so you know at, at the start of the tournament I think we were probably aiming for four points and to be honest I reckon those four points were probably from beating Czech Republic and drawing with Croatia as it happens you know that's not quite happened but we are still in it we, we, we do obviously need to win um, so I was expecting to begin into this game as a, a friendly essentially or maybe Croatia needing something to come second but uh, so not not too bad just now. Maybe by the time we get to sort of Tuesday morning, uh, it might be a bit worse. But uh, I'm I'm just glad that we're, we're still in it, getting to the last game with something to play for. Does it um does it frustrate you a little bit that you probably had tickets for the game? And you're gonna have to maybe scramble last minute to try and get tickets as well. Have to be away for fuck up, which I want to point out. Aye, it's a bit of a pain in the arse because like we we had the uh, ballot tickets for both and we lost them in both. Uh, fair enough, the supporters club, I was a, a point away for getting Hamden in the supporters club, but, you know, look, loyalty points are loyalty points and that's that's why they're there, so I'll, I'll not complain about that, but to lose them in the ballot and it really, what really fucked me off was uh, watching the, the game the other night, uh, seeing Scottish politicians, etc, there in hospitality with their ties on, it's like, how many points are these guys on, do you know what I mean? Like been following Scotland for however many years, home and previously away, and then can he get a ticket because fucking Douglas Ross is sitting in the hospitality end with his tie on? Um, that that annoyed me more than I, I don't mind Absolutely. when real fans are getting in. That that's fine. I don't care about that. But you know that that pissed me off a bit. Yeah. I think it, I think it's crap that um, I said it in the first part after the Czech Republic game. I went, you know. I've been in Scotland then to know what Hamden can be like as much as it's not the greatest national ground because of the distance from the pitch in terms of building atmosphere, it can get a bit rowdy. And I thought the Czech Republic game throughout after far as Scotland was lulled. And then the England the England game at Wembley where you had far less fans was so much louder. You could hear loud and clear exactly what they were singing. And yeah, I, hadn't, I know they had thing, more things to sing about, but it felt to me, and no offence to any real fans that got tickets for Scotland Czech Republic, which I'm sure there's thousands of, but I felt like more like the proper Scotland fans who were like going to every game, throw all ends away and stuff like that. The ones that really needed those loyalty points to get to Wembley were there, where I don't know if that necessarily was the case. And maybe it had more sponsors than it should have done on the game on Monday. Um, yeah, that frustrated me a, a little bit. Because um, I know England fans, I got tickets in the ballot for Scotland Czech Republic, which is just mad. Mad, really. Can't, hit, can't blame them. I'm doing the same on Tuesday. Um, but at the same time, it, it's not good if you're a Scotland fan that's been to see your teams in Denmark friendlies and stuff like that, is it? This is just a situation, you know, and if, uh, <clears throat> if things were normal, then sort of 
you know, probably six or seven points would have been enough to get supporters club members tickets for both games at Hamden. So it is just unfortunate that uh, that this has happened. But obviously all the games are free to air on BBC and ITV anyway, so it's not as if anybody's, unless you've not got a telly, uh, for whatever reason, then nobody's blacked out by a paywall uh, for having to watch them. So as long as I get to see them, um, I don't I don't really mind. If you haven't got a telly, there's a few down the barras going cheap at the minute. Normally £10,000 only going for 350 quid. Might be a bit of a smash screen, but there you go. Ask Cal Naismith about it if anyone's watched Open Goal recently. Um, if you haven't, that joke's gone right over your head. Ian, I'll come to you um, Come to you next, mate. I think, um, you know, on the flip side, it, it's been a few days to assess the Scotland game. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm quite balanced, but I'm frustrated by it. But in the context of it, it's just a poor performance. Um, France have shown just how easy it is to drop points against, shall we say, at, no offence, but lesser fancied nation, shall we say, or teams you, you would expect to get three points against, especially if you're going as one of the tournament favourites. Um, we, me and you both have an affection for Scotland for obvious reasons, which I won't go into, but obviously, um, how are you feeling a couple of days after the Scotland game and heading into the Czech Republic game? It's oh, just typical... They're sort of England, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's you know the highs and lows. Again, uh, you know Friday's uh, game was typical. You know, actually could have made a great you know start. Certainly had all all those their sort of chances. You know, some really good ones. You know, fluffed it. Um, I am in. I am in. You know, two two sort of minds so actually you know the draw did did kind of suit me in a way uh mm-hmm. you know for where i live and such like and uh, it didn't suit me it made it 10 times worse i'm sick and tired of the bloody chanting about getting nil nil draw swear to god <laughs> if I hear, I, yes i can boogie one more time i swear to god i'm going to go and find the person who actually sang it and ring her neck <laughs> i'm not really by the way if the police are listening that's a total joke that's not a genuine threat <laughs> but um yeah just oh uh, you know, could have killed that. You know, game off, off sort of early. Yeah. You know, you know, didn't didn't sort of do it. And you know, fair play to Scotland for such a spirited, um, their sort of performance. Really, you know. And I, I think was, we've just got to make sure we, uh, when it comes to England and we we'll play teams that were a expected to be or, sh- or should be beaten if we have any chance of winning anything or getting even further in the stages. I said it in the preview pod beforehand. We need to stick a goal in the back of the net in the first twenty minutes and knock the knock the stuffing out of a team. I think it's it's what teams like Man United did when I was a kid. They knock the stuffing out the early doors, and if they didn't, and the team did well defensively, they just keep asking questions until you're tired and get one in the ninetieth minute. And that's why you had like Fergie time was such a thing. Um, England didn't do either of them, but John Stones bags it, and then different game, I suppose. But alas, he, he didn't, did he, mate? So I guess. It is what it is, but Czech Republic game, um, i seen them in the flesh on uh, Friday. They're actually pretty tidy. That that chick is very, very good. And he's also 9 foot 11, which is a bit mental. He's really, really big. Um, but w- what do you fancy for, for Tuesday, Ian? Well, I think, oh gosh, I mean, you know, it's, it's at Wembley. You know, we should really be up for it. You know, we'll have the players there to, you know, do do the the business. It it's and that you know, and actually probably typical. They sort of England. They probably will, you know, raise raise their game hope, hopefully, and actually come out fly. And this yeah. their time, you know, we know that the players are there. We know what they can do. Um, but you know, it is England, and things don't always work out. <laughs> no, and I was thinking the other day about Euro 96, obviously drawn against Switzerland first game, we weren't that great, we weren't that good against Scotland when it was just a bit of Gaza magic, which might have been played on the telly once or twice, which I've enjoyed every time um, and then the Holland game, we different class, but then the Spain game, could have easily lost that, one out on penalties and then you played Germany, and the Germany game from my memory, which is getting hazy, but the Germany performance was the best performance we put in all tournaments, the one we got beat um, which is when you say typical England, yeah, that's kind of typical England. But um, Scott, just to flip it back to you, uh, now the euphoria has died down a little bit, I think, um, or certainly like had it, the top skimmed off because you're all nursing your hangovers. Um, this is going to sound like a dig, but but how confident are you that Scotland can grab the required three points because it's going to need a different level of performance than what you put in on on uh, Friday? Uh, I'm never confident with Scotland. Ever. 
Um, they they frustrate me and surprise me in equal measures, and have done for the last twenty years that I've been going regularly to, to watch Scotland. You know, when the chips are down, we seem to rise it up, and you know, when we seem to be on the up, we seem to like just hit the hit the gutter. <clears throat> um, the the main concern, obviously, is you know sort of where a goal is going to come from, because the Czech Republic game. We did have a few chances, but most of the chances, you know, Robertson missed a great chance. Uh, a couple of the midfielders had a couple of chances. Dykes had one chance that I felt he could have done better with against Czech Republic. And then again, uh, in the Friday night, probably uh, uh, certainly one of our best chances has come from, you know, right back position. Uh, O'Donnell, the, the sort of volley. Um, we, we did have a couple of, of other half chances, but none of these half chances are really are coming from the, the, the main two. So my concern there is where is the goal going to come, or goals that we might need, where are they going to come from? So um, I'd be inclined to start Nisbet on uh, Tuesday. So I see Ian's nodding away. Ian's, <laughs> Ian's hoping for him to score a half-trick. He's got a tenner on him as top goal scorer <laughs> in the tournament uh, after the preview. But I'd be inclined to start Nisbet because I felt, <clears throat> not so much against England, but against Czech Republic, even you know when in the second half when, when Dykes and Adams were both on, they were just too far away from each other. And against England, it's, it's slightly different because you're trying to keep the pressure off. So when the ball's coming in the in the air and Dykes is winning the knockdown, Adams he was still a bit too far away. You know if you're playing that kind of game, and I've seen that for many years, Mother will seem to have over the years had this little and large strike force, and you know. The, the little striker, which there's not really one, but the, the person winning the second ball has to be closer. And Dykes is winning the ball 30, 40 yards out with the header. And uh, Adams is like five yards, 10 yards away from him. We're still 25 yards away from the goal there. So I feel like maybe we need something a bit more to keep the ball on the ground. So I would go with this, but um, why not? There's no reason we can't do it. Whether we will, whether we won't, we need to keep that level of performance that we had the other night we need to defend how we defended um, you know restrict Croatia to chances because they are still dangerous uh, and then you know moving forward maybe just a wee bit more inventive in the final third if we're going to have any chance Is there a concern that Steve Clark can set up better against bigger teams um, England Rangers and Celtic at Killy Man United when he was at West Brom I think Liverpool when he was at West Brom but when you need to win, he doesn't quite know how to get out of that narrow shape and, and get forward, or am I being a bit harsh on him? Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not really at 100% on that. You know, I think if, if Gabe was here, he'd be the, the, the person to ask for that one, having watched Kelly week in, week out when, when he was there. Uh, yes, I think he knows, <clears throat> you know, uh, I think he, he, he knows how to set up against those teams. I think, however, with the 11 that he started with the other night, there is certainly potential for a more for, for that squad, for that team, but for more attacking tactics. You've got Everybody, more quality than the left of, like the balls coming in from KT and, and Robertson are obviously yeah. of a far superior quality that, you know, England will be happy with or France or whoever, that they would fit in those sort of teams, at least in the squad and the quality they've got on the ball and, and the delivery, definitely. And with, uh, with the one going and the one staying, it sort of takes the pressure off, but keeps us defensively sound. So uh, I, I wouldn't change much, if anything. I don't think, I, I, other than maybe Nisbet, um, maybe Nisbet and for Dykes, I think I would possibly go for. Other than that, I wouldn't really change uh, change much at all. Yeah, but, I think I think that's fair. Yeah, I think I think Nisbet just looks, he's more of a sniffer, isn't he? And you need it, really. Aye. I suppose it, I would have been totally against it. Um but Griffiths, potentially, you're kind of thinking, oh, should I have brought him now because we might need that bit of magic? And he can be crap for about 25 games and he turns up and scores two free kicks. I don't know where he's at. But maybe maybe Nisbet can be the man. Um, on the flip side, Ian, where Scotland are unlikely to make many changes, England are probably going to make quite a few, or at least the fans want that. I think, just looking online, but after the Czech Republic game with Scotland, Scotland had like five players, six players that I picked out that people wanted to see in the team. Exactly the same now with England. The wonder of Twitter. Um, there's a clamour for Jack Grealish, which I understand. 
there's a comma for Jaden Sancho, which I must be honest, wasn't there before the tournament for me. But then I've looked at his stats and as a man who thought we watched more Bundesliga than he actually does, his stats are incredible this season. Um, and also Jude Bellingham, which I don't think I'd be massively against. Jordan Henderson is another one. How many changes do you realistically make, though, Ian? Oh, well, if if I'm Southgate, for probably not that many, I think. <laughs> you know, but I'm not Southgate, so... Um... You know Henderson if he's fit, just because of his, you know, you know, drive and that, you know, spirit that he brings. Um, you know, on the best England, their sides have that. You know, they have a have a real, you know, leader. Um, you know, on the sides, certainly they're sort of missing that. Uh, they're just now or so far. Um, Sancho's an interesting one because I'd. I don't know him that well, but you're right. His stats are, are really good. Apparently, he's got 130... The numbers aren't right here, but it's like 137 goals or assists in the last like 120 or 30 games. Like almost a goal or an assist per game. Yeah. And I'm like, bloody... And to be fair, when I watch him, I never go, oh, Sancho. I'm always like, oh, Sancho. But I, I think it's just because I don't watch him week in, week out. Yeah, yeah, that's it. As we don't actually know him, do we? So, um, no. Not as well as the rest, anyway. Yeah. Um, for, for me, Henderson, you're touching Henderson. Henderson's huge, but I mean, let's not beat around the bush. Me and you, Ian, are going to love Jordan Henderson for a million and one reasons, but there's a reason he's won everything in the game pretty much at club level. Um, but I think Declan Rice and Calvin Phillips got a bit of stick. I kind of understand why it was very safe and pedestrian on Friday night. But for me, the defenders weren't really bringing out enough either. So I think for me, you bring in Harry Maguire for all these flaws that people seem to think he has. He's someone who can bring it out from the back, push the midfielders another level up and push us another level up. I know he's not hugely fit and I know the same as with Henderson, but it's just like the perfect game because you, you can't really lose necessarily. We'll probably qualify and you've still got to fancy yourself against anyone in last 16, despite that last performance. So... Do you maybe bring in Maguire and Henderson, get them that 90 minutes under the belt? And if they do well and they come through unscathed, then you go, right, we've got the full squad here. We've got the full the full start in 11. Yeah, yeah, I think you've summed it up. I mean, that's it, you know, um, he's... The sort of Maguire offers up, obviously lots of different um, their, their, their attributes. You know, he is, he is a leader, as in, in a way. You know he will he he will actually bring the the ball out and he's you know fearless as well I think you know so so yeah give him give him the the, the time you know get him back up to speed um, you know I think I think sort of further forward as well you know Southgate obviously he likes you know the the sort of Sterling you know the sort of Harry Kane's obviously. Um, is is a sort of automatic pick, although he was absolutely awful on on their Friday. Um, so, you know, does Southgate need to be their sort of bold? You know, San, Sancho or uh, their sort of Bellingham? You know, Grealish, Albert, you know, Lewin, who I do like. I must admit, it's a perfect game, though, isn't it? To be like bold because it's kind of almost risk free in a sense. But you touched on um. Harry Kane there, obviously, I, I don't know whether you listened. I hope he did. Um, but me and, and Matt from Jills in the Blood were discussing Harry Kane yesterday and he went on a right rant, but he was spot on. Like, um, And we both said it, it feels more like how we play Harry Kane, not how Harry Kane plays. I think he's got like a load of stick coming in from both games for how deep he is and stuff like that. But I think anyone who watches the Premier League will watch Spurs and see how he, how he sometimes does drop deep. So Son and, and um, Bale or Son and... Lucas Mora can sort of bomb on. Um, and then, like, he posted some stats about it. And this is really interesting. Uh, since the 2018 World Cup, Raheem Sterling, Harry Kane and Marcus Rashford, who you would say are the two people I could bomb on when he comes deep. Because Harry Kane gets a ton of assists as well. He's not just a goal scorer. There's a reason he's so highly rated. Um, but since the 2018 World Cup, when Raheem Sterling, Harry Kane and Marcus Rashford have played together, which is in four of them, only four games, Spain away, 1-3-2. Croatia at home, 1-2-1. One, one. Bulgaria at home, 1-4-0. Bulgaria away, 1-6-0. And they scored 13 of the 15 goals in those games. Is there a case to say that Kane needs those type of players who can run in behind him while he draws players in around him as opposed to maybe Phil Foden, who's a totally different player, or Jack Grealish, who's a different player? 
you know what I always look at um you know and I've you know thought about this for the 30 years now and it's always uh, you know I think you know the national team's so sort of difficult because obviously managers have their way to to sort of set up how they would like to play and then and then they expect you know players to fit into their you know systems whereas actually should we be looking at well why why are you know why is Harry Kane a, a first first sort of pick why has he scored so many goals for for their Spurs and look at how how Spurs they sort of play or or you know Rashford they sort of still and they etc um, and does actually Southgate needs to be more bold and say well actually let's let's play how they play at sort of club level you know Rash I mean Sterling won he's won the, the league again this their season you know Champions League final um, you know Rashford's had a he's a he's had a bit of a mix this season but you know Man United have absolutely come 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 there back and done a lot a lot a lot sort of better than I thought that that they would and you know so playing with um their sort of confidence and such like and I do feel it's uh, you know we 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 need to play play our our best players in 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 where they are suited that's the thing um so so yeah change it up and look and say well actually what works at at their club level and their teams are winning you know titles and making finals and it's obviously working they are confident you know players so um we we need to take that and not just think well you know this is my system this is how how I would like to play because it's it's not working i think also a huge question mark for me i know we didn't have the worst of games but look shows not our best left back Ben Chilwell's our best left back, and he hasn't been on the bench the past two games. Like I, I wouldn't pay fifty million for Luke Shaw. I'd easily, quite happily, pay fifty million for Ben Ben Chilwell, who's just won the, the Champions League, and he's keeping out a very good left back in Marcus Alonso. Um, yet he can't even get on the bench. And then uh, there was a bit of a clamour for Reese James at right back. Me being one of them, I thought it was the best of the th- well, best of the four. Um, watching it, I think Kyle Walker gets us much further up the pitch, and he offers much more tournament experience. Do we need to revert back to the best two fullbacks we probably got for the next game in Kyle Walker and um, and Ben Chilwell on the other side, or maybe even Trippier on the other side? Oh well, I mean, you know, Southgate's dug a hole there, and uh, uh, you know, made sure that we we'll have far too many, you know, sort of choices at 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 their right back, and. Uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, Chilwell on on bats and such like he he has said the best there just now. And like you say, you know, we all, uh, you know, me me and you, you know, Graham, we love a bit of Marcus the Alonso. So the the fact that he is oh, making Marcus them out of the team is uh, is you know says says a lot. So, um, God, I don't know. You know, we 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 need to be bold, but also we need. To be solid, I mean, you know, Scotland out out there for us in many ways, and uh, you know, so we don't need that either. But you know, you know, if you want to win things, you need to you need to be bold and you need to grab it. And so, um, yeah, yeah, I would, I would, you know, Walker, he's, um, I think he gets a lot of stick. He's he's quite underrated in many ways. I but think that. Yeah. He's just won the league. I mean, you know that again that is it itself again. Yeah, exactly. He played in the Champions League final again. He plays with the likes. Of, he defends in training against the likes of De Bruyne. Yeah, every exactly. week. So he's got to have something about him. But I think ultimately, because I want it to be a positive, me and Scott and me and Gabe and me and Callum talked about what Scotland need to change, and we we'll talked about how it was good that Scotland can change it. They bring, can bring in Gilmore. They can bring in Patterson. They can bring in Nisbet. There's, there's options for Scotland for once. The abundance of riches that we have on the bench, it's wonderful that we can change it. I just hope that he, he does change it because I think if players start feeling they're safe in a Southgate team, like Raheem Stillen, oh, he'll be loyal, I'll play. They're not going to play at the top of the game. I think if he just bends off Sterling and the ones that he's loyal to and brings in the players that you, you maybe wouldn't expect, that puts a bit of a rocket up their arse and it creates competition for places going into the really, really important part of the tournament. But... um 
The big question for me, Ian, before I move back on to Scotland, you've sort of touched on it before, but if we finish second, we face one of Poland, Slovakia, Spain or Sweden. Um, I actually look to try and work out who it would be. I don't know who it would be because Spain don't look that great, but you'd assume they'd probably beat Slovakia. Poland could easily sneak in there. Sweden could easily win their last game and actually finish top and leave Spain second, even if they do win. So we don't know who we're going to play. What I would say is, is it's significantly easier than facing France, Germany or Portugal. Um, but then again, France only drew with Hungary. So do we play for the draw or do we play for the draw? Sorry, is that far too defeatist? Just go for it because France have shown who are allegedly the tournament favourites that they can still be drawn against, shall we say? I think I think you have to go for it. I think um, you know you can't you know look at oh 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 well if we do this and we'll face them and it it just doesn't work like that. You need you know the players need to be and it hinders you, doesn't it? It hinders you when you get the semi final and you face Croatia and you go oh these are better than the side we faced. I'd rather have confidence of beating good teams. Exactly. And get to like that later stage and then you yeah. go well we will beat France we will beat Germany we will beat. And we all, France, Germany and Portugal, we, we owe them one, no matter what. Um, Scotland owed us one and you've seen what happens when you get a bit of anger in you uh, and a bit of fight and determination. So don't tell me England can't do that. I know someone the other day uh, said some of the players don't look up for it. Our players don't look up for it in a major tournament. England, Scotland, get fucked. Like, of uh, course they do. It's just football. Football's not as easy as, as that. Like, um, so I think they'd be up for it no matter who we got. But but sorry, and I, I asked you the question, not asked myself the question, which I've inevitably answered myself. <laughs> no, no, we we'll have to win. They they will have to win win there well. You know, you know, you you want to top the the group. You want to go go through. You know, you're gonna face who you're gonna face. That's that's the thing. And if you want to win, then you have to beat. You know, all of the all of the top the top top their side. So. You know, no matter who you face, you have to go out there. Um, so yeah, just just be bold. You know, score score loads of goals. Get get the the, the country back on their side because I think everyone was feeling really flat. You know, you know, heard lots of lots of their sort of anger about it, and uh, you know, lots lots of sort of criticism of of their Southgate again, it does feel very much like, uh, you know, supporting um, their sort of Sunderland on a, on a national sort of team level. Yeah, it feels, it feels like Groundhog Day, doesn't it, with England? Yeah. I think the 2018 World Cup was a bit different. So, yeah, for me, win, win comfortably and then bring on whoever we get in the last 16. If we get beat, we haven't been good enough and that's what it is. Yeah. If we're not good enough in the last 16, we're not going to be good enough in the final and, oh, and wow. ultimately lose second place to second place. Um on another team who obviously Scott would probably see getting to the knockout stages as a big achievement, which it would be. That's not me being demeaning. I think Scotland have never done it. It's got to be seen as like the next step for you. Um, and even if you do get knocked out at that point, then you start getting to the next tournament. And you go, well, could we qualify for that? Could we go further in it? It's getting the monkey off your back, so to speak. Um, you're likely to finish third if you win. Um, if you do qualify, I don't think you can get into second or, or top. I don't think that'll happen. Um, so you're likely to come up against, from what I can see, because I think we'll keep the fixture at Hamden. I could be completely wrong with this, but I think we'll keep the fixture at Hamden for COVID sake, fans sake and all that kind of stuff. So you're likely to get Poland, Slovakia, Spain, uh, Sweden. Can Scotland get there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> there's no reason why not. Um, you know, I think after... After Monday, you know, which was a, a big deflation, and that that was that's the deflation was fair, right? You know, and then after some time, you know, I think I said in the review show last week, after some time to, to think about it, you know, I don't actually think on Monday we, we played that badly. I think the difference, as I said on there, was was like because a forty million euro striker who's let's be honest, he's he's scored two goals out of nothing. You know, he's got between two defenders and it jumped them. And then the second one, you know, great finish. You know, what's the goalie doing, Tam, type stuff. He's um, shit. Some people I mean? would say that he's, like, he's, he's shit. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say that because that's shit part of, that's what that is. Uh, so, you know, <clears throat> there's no reason why we, we, we can't do it. The concern is I, I would probably be a lot more confident if we only needed a draw. Yeah. You know, the fact is that we need to go and win. 
Uh, and the, the risk there is that by going and trying to win, do we leave ourselves exposed? I don't think we will. I think we'll go for that five at the back again, and we'll, we'll hold a couple of players back. And you know, to be fair, after the, the, the Czech game, there's a couple of players that I had sort of criticised and said I would likely drop them. You know, Grant Hanley, for example, but I thought he was he was outstanding the other night. Um, he won he won every ball. He, Grant Hanley found a yard of pace in four days. I don't know where that came from. Like at one point, you know, I think it was Stirling's hair up the line and Hanley's at the other 18-yard box. And before you know it, he's, he's there. So I think the thing that Scotland has gone for us, as Ian said, is that we might not be blessed with ultimate quality of, you know, a Harry Kane or a Schlick or a player like that, or, you know, even looking at Croatia, a Modric, a Perisic, something like that. But what we do have is we have heart, we have determination, and our players, we, we won't give up. And sometimes, just sometimes, that, you know, the hard work beats the talent if if we can dig in. And uh, I, I think we can do it. My head, when you were reeling off the things that you have, my head also went, you've got a goalkeeper that can get logged from 50 yards as well. <laughs> well, he'll, uh, he'll, he'll not be going up for... See, like even if it's the last minute and it's we'll one for each, a corner. I, I don't think he's going for the corner. I think he'll just stay where he is. Uh, he's this he's time. not doing a Schmeichel. He's not doing no. a Mark Poom. It's not happening. No, um, definitely not. I normally ask for predictions at the end of the, the, the pod. And obviously, it's a nice, short, sharp one today because... This is our 10th Euro 2020 podcast. Jesus. Um, thanks for tuning in. Everyone who has been, it's it's definitely a labor love, but we have enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. Um, obviously, we hope that we'll all be back for the, the knockout stages, but we have got the final group game to say, you know, who's going to get where. Um, I want to know who you think will qualify. And obviously, that could be three or two teams, of course, because I think Croatia and Scotland could also both fail to qualify. So I'm going to go with I think England will top the group. I think we will win. I think we'll beat Czech Republic at Wembley. I think we have to. I think it might only be a 1 or 2 nil. That leaves Czech Republic in second place because I think Croatia and Scotland will get a 1-1 draw. So my, my, sorry Scotland fans, but my bet for getting through would be England topping the group with the Czech Republic in second. The other two teams going out is not being good enough as third place teams only on two points each. Um, I'll come to you first, Ian. What, what, how do you see the end of the group going? Um, I'm gonna be, <laughs> I'm gonna be bold. I mean, uh, uh, Scott knows I do, you know, and I am, I am a bit, a bit sort of split. So, uh, not, not with sort of loyalties, but you know, living in in their Scotland. We like so. to see them do well, don't we? We want to see them qualify, as long as it's not yeah. at the detriment of England, of course. <laughs> but uh, no, no, England definitely there to top the the group. I think Scotland can absolutely win it. Um, on on. Uh, they're sort of Tuesday, so I would love to see them finish, uh, you know, second in there. I think, I think uh, that they will, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm going for England, Scotland. So, if England, would you take uh, Czech Republic in third place then? Because Czech Republic um, should qualify on four points. On four, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I think it would be, what's it? Is it two goal swing? Well, oh, that would be interesting. If Scotland won two 0 who would get second? Hmm. Because that would be an interest if, if we beat. Che- Although no, actually it would be Scotland because if we beat Czech Republic, yeah, that's fine. I'm st- I can't do maths. There's an obvious reason. <laughs> There's a reason I went for journalism at university rather than mathematics. Um, Scott, Ian said Scotland can do it. England, uh, Ian said England will also do it. I've gone the opposite way, um, which I, I genuinely mean. But head over heart, who do you see? Who do you see getting through? Uh, I'll go for the third way. Then I'll go for England to win the group. Czech Republic to come second and Scotland to qualify in four points after beating Croatia 2-1. I think looking at the um, the tables for anyone who's wondering, again, like I said, I'm not the best at mathematics, but we were working out last night. I think pretty much if Scotland win, they will get through because I think there's two teams that will 100% finish below them, I think. I think there's a couple of games where unless something wild happens, they're not going to be the best third place team on four points. I think four points get you through, so... It, Shit or busted. Um, nice short and sharp one today because uh, we're not good, basically. We'll be back within the with a reaction to the end of Group D, which, you know, could be either way. It could be both sides going through in a completely happy pod or it could be a half happy, half sad one. Who knows? But we will be back with it. And then obviously throughout the knockout stages, we'll be doing stuff as well as we get closer and closer to the final, which hopefully, hopefully England are in. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't thought you might say that. <laughs> well, so it's recorded now. Um, <laughs> but do subscribe. Thanks so much for subscribing as much as you have. I know I said I don't really care, but it's nice when you see people subscribing. Obviously, it just means that you know your work is valued and, and you've enjoyed listening to us. So please do drop a subscription if it's the first one you've listened to. We've got over 100 episodes with former players, um, all sorts of stuff. If you're a Scotland fan in particular, we've got one with Dick Gallagher back over a year ago when he did admit that they would qualify, um, which is quite a good listen. Um, and obviously, if you're a Sunderland fan or an England fan, there's plenty of stuff there as well. But thanks for joining us as always. We've been What the Fork at the Euros officially, because as I said before, I live just around the, literally around the corner from Hamden. Um, and please drop back in at the end of the week. Cheers. Bye.